So welcome to this quick overview of the module Formal Methods for Software Engineering. It's for master students and it's a six credit uh, module. And first we need to start with what are formal methods? What is formal methods? What does it refer to? It refers to mathematically rigorous techniques and tools for the specification, design and verification of software and hardware systems. And as you can see in the title, we are going to apply it mainly for software systems. So we are concerned of how to use formal methods for software engineering. So uh, we will have a look at the different topics, the specification and also the, the design and the verification of software systems. So software that already exists or software that we want to build. And we have a look why this might be relevant for your future career and, and in general. So formal methods, has been applied in different ways in industry. So there, there were some reports where people from industry have written uh, papers about how they applied formal methods, for example, at Amazon Web Services. Then at NASA, they applied formal methods for quite some time. They have research divisions. Uh, also Microsoft Research has um, divisions where, where they explore formal methods and create tools, open source tools also. And we will use one of them that origin originally was created at Microsoft Research. Um, the requirements for this module, so you should have a good understanding of software engineering and software quality. If you have no idea about uh, software engineering and how to develop software and software quality, what it means for software to work well uh, or, or not to crash, things like that, then it will be quite difficult to make the connection. Uh, we will not make the connection very explicit at all times in this module, we're going to learn the formal methods techniques and how to apply them. We will see applications from uh, the analysis of software that and how it fits into software engineering. But the main focus is really the, the tools and techniques. So you should already have this, this knowledge of software engineering. You should also be confident with mathematics because the, as it says in, in the definition and in the title, the formal usually refers to formal mathematics and rigorous stuff. So you should yeah, be quite confident with your mathematics background. Um, and the challenges in this module will be basically learning new ways of thinking and learning new languages. You need to transfer existing knowledge to new techniques, existing knowledge in software engineering to the new techniques in formal methods. And there should be some creativity and dedication to solve problems. Here is an overview of the contents of the module. So we will start by first introducing the idea of formal methods and then declarative thinking, because many of the uh, formal methods, languages and tools that we will use, they actually require you to express things declaratively instead of imperatively. So it's not like programming languages where some code is executed. It's more like a description of constraints and then you analyze the constraints. So it's it's all about declaring uh, constraints about maybe the behavior of software systems or the structure of software systems. So we will motivate formal methods, then look at what is the role of formal methods in software engineering, because there's also, of course, pure formal methods people, and, and they, they have very, maybe very different um, values than, than let's say the, the people who want to apply it in software engineering. And then we will look at some examples, applications, but just really, uh, very, very high level. And then we will start with the basic tools and the tools, they they are uh, shown here and, and they will basically increase in, in terms of the expressiveness, in terms of the models that we can create with these tools and the, the things that we can express, the things that we can analyze. So we will first look at satisfiability solving. We will always have a look at what are the underlying let's say mathematical theories, but we will also express all these mathematical theories. So here, propositional logic, where you have variables that can be true or false, and you have connectives between them. We will always express this in the language of some tool. So usually these are specification languages. We will look at uh, solving these satisfiability problems. So how can we find assignments to the variables? to the Boolean variables. And then we will look at applications. So for example, configuration analysis, there, are, there might be some 
elements of a software system, let's say the Linux kernel that I want to use together, but some things they might exclude each other or some things they might require each other. And then we will have a look at how to express this using the SAT solver and how to automatically solve it to come up with only valid configurations. Then the next step will be uh, satisfiability model of theory solving. So this will be on top of SAT solving, that's a clear extension with uh, some additional theory. So then we can use integers and, and maybe other data types. And we will look at the SMT solver Z3, which is developed, originated by Microsoft Research. And then now it's an open source project with many contributors worldwide. And it's a very, very popular and very powerful SMT solver that's used in industry and research. So we will see how this can be used, for example, for analyzing code, what code evaluations could happen. Um, this can be used for yeah, more, more powerful analysis than, than testing because we can try to make it exhaustive uh, in, in some uh, reasonable constraints. Then we will look at relational modeling. So this is then um, a little bit different. It's not using the, um, the, the theory extensions here, but it's its own theory and it's more for modeling structures of software systems where it makes sense to have relations. So for example, in object-oriented software systems, you would have objects and these objects have relations. They link to other elements. You would have this on the level of classes and, and associations, and then also on the level of objects. And we will look at a tool that can represent this relational first order logic. It's called the alloy analyzer. And we will see how it, for example, can be used for analyzing um, data structures or the architecture of, of software systems. And finally, we will look at model checking. This will be quite different. So here, all of these, they are a little bit more um, on, on the side of structure and, and constraints. Now, in, and also the logic, we'll just talk about constraints on, uh, on some variables. But now we will introduce something called temporal logic, and we will look at also temporal aspects. So there is an extension where we look at how a system behaves over time and how variables are assigned and changing over time and we will look at a tool uh, well a class of tools called model checkers and the tool that we will look at is, is one particular model checker which is also used in um, yeah some of the success stories linked on the, the previous slides and with this we will analyze some reactive systems maybe some uh, controllers in in machines um, or some traffic light controllers something like that where we have a critical system that should behave correctly because if it doesn't behave correctly all the time uh, then then we could run into into issues during the whole module we will have exercises where we will use all of these tools so um, you will have different worksheets where you will then write your own specifications using these tools here some of these tools they can be used on the web some of these tools you have to yeah, install on your computer but they're very yeah easy to install and available for many platforms so we will use them we will also use them in the lab um, and then finally there'll be a project where uh, you have basically a larger project to apply some of these tools so you can there'll be a time in the in the module where you can then choose what kind of uh, topic, maybe what kind of, of language, what kind of application you would prefer to do your project on. And then this will be the, the project that you will complete in the semester.